Why? It's gonna be fucking great. It's gonna be a stone groove. This helps you kill. You can't kill without being yeah. death. Hey, hey, do me a favor. Can hey, you give us some vitality? I really want some vitality. I'm not happy with no. I need a substitute. I really want some vitality. Some vitality. Click, click, click. Fine. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. Hey! Look at Come on, let's hurry up. I want to eat. Food, food, food! You're gonna do a half roll with just your head. I need, I need something to have a heart attack in. Might as well be something that can give me the electric shock throw. Wow! Tonight, tonight, tonight. We make love with the moon. Here we are, baby. The kings are back. New York, watch out. We're coming after you next, Hulk Hogan. If you missed them in 85, they're back one more time. The only time, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome S.O.D. Born in 1985 um, in Ithaca, New York, at Pyramid Studios. SOD was a joke. We did it like 
four days, we had this total attitude, this is just good, having a good time, and then it got real big. It all started as a cartoon character called Sergeant D. Um, basically being bored after finishing my guitar tracks on the Anthrax album, spreading the disease, I would draw pictures of this skeleton guy who uh, said real, like, fascist things, and I'd put them up all over the studio as a joke. And they were getting ready to do spreading the disease up in Ithaca, so he said, come on up, we'll write a couple of tunes, I'll play what we got. Then I started writing songs based around this character, this Sergeant D guy, who's just this real, you know, fascist type character, and uh, had an idea to, you know, make a record out of it. This is the deal. This is what crossed over hardcore and speed metal to make it one unified scene. This is it. This is, this is history. This piece preserved in plastic and in time for all people to see. They should have sent one of these up in the fucking, in that, instead of the greetings in 500 and, what was it, 50 languages? They sent up on that laser disc into space, so if um, an alien finds it, they, they can, uh, you know, they listen to it. it should have sent it, yeah, sent it on the challenge. <laughs> fucking like blow it up. <laughs> Spread the message of the park. Indestructible CDs! Look at this, notice how the, the billfold didn't rip. Did the CD get That up? Satan did that! This is when music was fun and all the scumbags stuck their fingers in it and ripped it apart. Simplest album, uh, simplest album I've ever worked on in my life. Because the whole idea was just to get it done and uh, just make it as live and spontaneous as possible. We just said, let's just have a blast, and did it, and came out cool. And we rehearsed a couple of times. Once. In, yeah, once. <laughs> in the studio. And then recorded it in two days, and then mixed it in one day. And that was it. Charlie drew the album cover. And, uh, nothing. Nothing? Put the pictures together on the back. Had a collage in the back, and that was it. And we had an album. How's everybody doing tonight?
Here's a new song for you. Move on. Hey, thanks. Got lots of friends down here tonight. Got some friends came down from upstate. People came from Russia, from Germany, from California, from New Jersey, from Brooklyn, the Bronx, from Long Island, from Queens, from everywhere. This goes out to Anthony and the functional idiots. Pi Alpha Nu. There was a lot of people who took it the wrong way and a lot of people who took it the right way. You know, when it came out, you know, people thought the lyrics were really cool, you know, because they were funny or whatever, and that's the way it was supposed to be taken, as if you were reading a comic book. I saw the crossover of hardcore and rap and all of that happening in the beginning. And I, I don't know, I guess I kind of used some of the lingo without using their music, and it got kind of mis misunderstood. S.O.D. was you know, a big part on everyone, on the whole fucking hardcore and metal. It was the first real crossover of hardcore and metal. Yeah, I, mean, I hear so many records out, and it just totally like fit that whole style, which is cool in a way. Because yeah. we aren't doing anything much, so someone else can take it over. SOD was very influential, even for bands. What other music, you know, other music was influenced by SOD. And, uh, All these bands coming out for ages now to sound, still sound. They try to sound six. like SOD, but that's the beauty of SOD was that. We was, did it without trying, we just had fun. It just happened, you know. And now and it's like a whole big movement, like everyone's doing all the crunchy chords and yelling mosh every 15 seconds in their songs and shit. Yeah, they don't even know what it is anyway. Explain. It, it, mosh! Explain mosh. Away. Sardonica. This next song is called Speak English or Die! You come to our country, you can't get the job. Pull the pull the pull the you go home and fucking stop. Something on the corner, corner selling papers in the street. Put the fucking tickets running where you come from and speak back. Yo! 
Thank you. Throw a little bit of Slayer in there for you. All right. Next song's an instrumental. SOD was said if SOD was to get back together, we'd blow every fucking band away. We knew it was a great record, and, you know, but you can't keep a good record down, so that's why till this day it's still so. Because it's a good record. We were mixing SOD and then like I heard we were like wow like this. I heard it. I knew it when I first heard SOD that it was gonna be big. I heard Johnny came up, Johnny Z came up for the mix down and like his hair flew back. It did make a big impact because not even so much when it first came out, but more like a year after it came out, after we it was said and done and it was gone, we had played a bunch of shows and, and then that was it. We knew we weren't gonna do it no more and then all of a sudden, a year later, it got big.
I want everybody to be aware of something. See, you people are a little bit too crazy. Your barrier is about to be ripped down. So you people in the front, if that shit goes, watch your hands. We'll be calling you lefty. Right said Fred. Here's a new song for you. Here's a new song for you. It's called... This next song is called No Turning Back. Get pissed off because I couldn't get a job because I had like long hair. I get treated like shit when some, you know, kind of couldn't even speak the language. Had a good job just because he was clean cut. This doesn't make you prejudiced. You just get frustrated. So oh, he was totally cut. exaggerated. He was clean cut. Homo, vitality. I don't know if that's on the tape, but they're all they're all strong. What else is on there? Homo. Yeah, those were all crap society songs. Milk was a pretty cool song. It's about milk. When we did the album, we we, we also recorded this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
what, 57 song demo. Yeah. Something called the Crab Society. 59. 59. <laughs> called the Crab Society North Demo. And um, that would be Scott, Billy, and Danny. And it's probably the first type of noise line for that you'll uh, that you ever want to hear. And I wrote the coolest lyrics. I was the one who, they were writing speaking like you should die, kill yourself, Freddy Krueger. And I wrote No Turning Back, music and lyrics. And yeah, Pi Alpha Nu, about drinking and driving and saving the environment. Me! Yeah, but now all that environmental stuff's so popular now. Now it's like... No one -na 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 save the trees. -na 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 save the fish. I'm glad to see New York hasn't lost its fucking touch. Put on the lights, let's see all you fucking ugly bastards. Ew, what about up there? I can't see him. Fuck it. This goes out. This goes out to all the fucking people who had to sit home and watch shit about the fucking golf crisis. When you couldn't even watch your favorite fucking TV show. Cause some fucking piece of shit from Iraq. Fuck up like a fucking asshole. This is called Fuck the Middle East! Fucking rub ahead. All right. The shirt. What's the next song? I like to do a song for you from my old band MOD. For you. We're gonna do. I don't know. I think you might notice one. Wait, 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 wait.
a real job. I have nothing against Jimi Hendrix. In fact, I listen to some of his music. I find it to be innovative. But however, you know, when a band like Living Color can make a song about Elvis Presley and say, Oh, Elvis died sitting on the throne. Talking about him dying sitting on his toilet having a heart attack. And they don't get a fucking thing said to him. And I said, Jimi Hendrix, you're dead. That's all I said. Yeah, you didn't say what? I didn't say die. he died. I didn't say he died choking on his fucking puke. <laughs> you know, I said, you're dead. Which is the truth. And it was just funny because it's like. And it was you. funny because no one ever said. You ever hear, you know, hear people going. Guess what you hear? Oh, Jimmy Hendrix, the greatest guitarist in the world. They talk like he's still alive. Go, he's fucking dead. All right, there's other great guitarists now. Steve Ray Vaughan. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And now for my favorite part of the show. We're going to do some uh, ballads for you. You want to hear some ballads? Come on. Some Hey, my shoe! Here you go. If you know it, sing it. You're dead! Wanna hear it again? You're dead! You wanna hear it again? You wanna do it again? You're dead! Actually, what would Jimi Hendrix be doing if he was alive today? Scratching at the lid of his coffin. <laughs> Yo, Billy, show him how you can sing on this one. Go ahead. What is it? Oh. All right. People want to sing along? Want to sing along with something with me? Cause I can't sing a fucking note to save my life. I want to hear you people repeat me. I love living in a city. Yeah, something like that. What the devil? What the devil? So we don't have a bunch of shit to play, so. We're going to do an artist, it's called Pussy Whipped. It's the Kimbo!
how we played the Rising Sun, and it was Hawaiian. Mo, who got? Yeah. Hey, where's my fucking the, pen, the Rising Billy? Sun. That's right, the Rising Sun. Yeah, we played. It was a Yonkers, man. We had foam surfboards. That and they, so at the end of the, the night, that, that was the, that was the pie. SOD SOD uh, Hawaiian bash. Yeah, I got totally pied at the end, which happened to be again on the Dark Angel tour with Nuclear. I'm always on the road on my fucking birthday. But it was fun, you know. I smelled like puke afterwards, though, because the, the cream would go immediately sour on your sweaty body. Mm. So I couldn't even go into diet. Sweaty, sour I smell. I smelled like a fucking Yeah, you smelled like a bunch of... I remember you left that shirt in my van, man. It was oh. baking in my van for like two days. I opened my van and it smelled like I stuffed my fucking face in a dead buffalo's ass. Yeah, the SOD uh, Hawaiian bash. Yeah, the SOD beach party. That was really cool. We made a... We got these surfboards made of styrofoam. I made these SOD stencils. And as soon as we came out, the fucking place was full with styrofoam, yeah. man. Kids were just going nuts. People were coming on stage with these styrofoam surfboards and then diving on top of the crowd with the surfboards. <laughs> and we gave out, everyone had those Hawaiian lays. A friend of ours, Neil Stopel, got like a couple of hundred of these things. So we gave them out to everyone who came in. So everyone was wearing these Hawaiian lays and stuff. We created a real vibe. Mo, remember Mo? I got Mo. Oh, yeah. What's hey, the Billy. Fucker? What's my fucking pen? The guy borrowed this guy's pen. To sign someone's uh, autograph. I think. Oh no! What did I do? I went to get some chick's phone number. I think somebody's phone number. Yeah, I don't well, know, well, you haven't gotten any phone number. Yeah, I did. I get the I get the phone book. I got a fucking book full of them this big. It says New Jersey Bell. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I was doing something like that, and I got the guy's gold pen, <clears throat> and I borrowed it. And I got to sign something. I don't remember. And I fucking gave it to the person when I did it. I'm like here, okay, thanks. And I walked away. And a guy came up to me like 20 minutes later. He's like, Hey, Billy. Where's that fucking pen? That's a 24 karat gold fucking pen. How's everybody doing, all right? Check, check. Hey, Not. Nah. Hey, Gordy, what? You ready? Hey, turn the lights on. Turn the lights on, man. We need some lights. Something. You ready? Here we go. Come on, the regular light. Come on, give me some color. Let's see some color back here. All right, let's hear it for the light crew. Here we go. Dover, show place. Yeah. The country, fucking country place. Who the hell did we play with? We played with Overkill. Overkill, yeah. That was the first show, and before we went on, I forgot I had to tune two of my strings out, and not one for like the first song. I yeah. forgot. I was like totally out of tune. I was going, this sounds fucked up. Good, yeah. I realized and that was pretty funny. So the first note we ever played live was probably wrong, <laughs> thanks to me. Yeah. But, um, that was you pretty fucking fun. dick! Hey, man. <laughs> I think that's what broke up the band, that first note. Definitely. Yep, yeah, it started off on a, on a bad note. <laughs> <laughs> no, Actually, pun, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah right? All right. <laughs> oh, this next song! It's the brainchild of our manager. This song. That's, that's Billy Milano. I'm not shy. Come on, bring it on. Uh, this is this is our manager's brainchild. Next time your girlfriend is yelling at you because she's on the rag, smack the bitch in the mouth. So this is for Johnny Z. This is, oh, the premenstrual princess. Hello.
The Ritz was the biggest thing we ever played. No show with the Ritz with Wendy L. It was good. We were gonna have like no stage room, and then one day Williams took their drums down and they let us use their riser, which was really cool. Cro-Mags didn't make the bill because. Motorhead sound Motorhead was sound checking too long, and also it was a the promoter of the club who was their manager had to make a choice whether to put the Cro Mags on or SOD, and naturally everybody was there to see SOD. For the first time, Billy came out in a full Santa Claus <laughs> costume because, and the reason you won't see it is because the idiot at the Ritz who was supposed to be taping it thought we were the Cro Mags and didn't start rolling the cameras until someone told him we were SOD. So we didn't get the Santa Claus costume, but you can see the Christmas decorations up on the stage anyway. This is going to be the title track of the second SOD album. Uh, this is called, uh, let me say, the title of the album is going to be USA for SOD. Because I'm sick of giving these people in Ethiopia and every other fucking country money. I didn't give them a dime. I wouldn't lose a week of sleep. This is the title track on the second album. Aren't you hungry? What about that fashion statement with the underwear on the outside of the pants? What about that fashion statement with the underwear on the they outside just, of the pants? They were just, the pants were cleaner. <laughs> so I put them closer to my, my ass and my balls, and I put the dirty underwear on the outside. <laughs>
We met Robert England. Well, you, we did a song. You tell him about it. I'm talking too much. Scott Rose. We met this guy from England. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. That's it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, this guy from another. <laughs> well, somehow we got in touch with the guy who played Freddy Krueger and shit. <laughs> Get the fuck out, man. We saw him putting all his makeup on. He was just this regular guy, and then he just started getting uglier and uglier. He was a fucking douche. Was I was afraid of that dude. He told me he was going to rip my dick off. We did a photo session we never made, but the song never made the movie. With yeah, Freddie Krueger? Yeah, the opposite instead. This, yeah, the song was, was, the song was scarier than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Freddie Krueger, that soft faggot. So we did um, the Metal Forces thing. We got on, it with the, on the cover of him, and people were going, that's not really him, is it? Yeah, people were like, you didn't meet Freddie Krueger, did ya? <laughs> yeah, like his real name is... You go fucking, you, I picked up the phone book and looked up Freddy Krueger. Kruger. Fred, Kruger, Freddy. Yeah, right. 319 Sunset Drive. Elm Street. Elm, yeah, Elm Street, <laughs> sorry. Charlie wants to play guitar. We're gonna be really trendy now too. Never mind. This might buck some people out. Hey, Scott, give me the lyrics. This is what you call learning on the fucking spot, baby. Lyrics. I don't even know how this one goes. We're gonna figure it out. I'd like to thank everybody for coming down, my buddies from Chicago. Come on! This is for Natalie!
My, uh, my, uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my cum, your toothpaste. My dick, your totem pole. It matches with it. That's it, Scott. <laughs> your girlfriend, my suppository. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Billy was Billy. And that was the great thing about having Billy at SOD. Billy made SOD. We may, we may have been the band, the three of us, but I think it was Billy Milano is really what he, in, in effect, almost became the Sergeant D character that was on the album cover. Uh, it, I mean, Billy made S.O.D. Billy was S.O.D., in my opinion. What a peaceful rehearsal without Billy here. And just wait till he does come. <laughs> we can actually get shit done now. Wait a minute, what's a, who fought it? What's a knife? Your name is Mike? You what you say, fucking Frank Bella, man? You saying shit about me? I'm serious. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I'm serious, man. I'll, I'll fuck, I'm going to have to fucking hurt you, man. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. I'm going to kid it. I fuck. We're practicing right now for the show, so relax. We always just wanted to have a good time. The whole point behind SOD was just we just didn't give a shit about anything. You know, and uh, I guess that basically came, you know, from Billy's attitude rubbing off on uh, on all of us because, you know, with Billy around, you didn't have to give a shit about anything. Hey, quick. <laughs> oh, Billy. That's a paper towel. <laughs> Billy did that once in a softball. I crush your head like a grapefruit! Sergeant D's dick. You ready? Sergeant D's dick is coming. And it's on your chin. Like this. Look at this. Come here, girlie. Nice beaver. Just had it stuffed. Billy was just, he was the choice, you know. I just knew, get this guy up on the stage and he's gonna, he's gonna rule. You should stay on guitar, man. You're better on guitar than drums. Hopefully, maybe we'll see you again before seven years goes by. Thank you so much, man.
Have a good time. Peace. Right said Fred. It's fucking ball and shit. We'll see everybody at the party who's invited. If you're not invited, you're not invited. All right. Hi, this is Billy Milano, former lead singer of MOD, former lead singer of SOD. This is our tour pass. This is our tour laminate. Look, we're on the road. And I'm in the band. I'm in the band. Former bass player of the Disciples. Former singer, of course, from Alarm. I'm losing my mind. This time, that's right. Yo, don't fucking Billy. Don't be fucking going ape shit tonight, Charlie Bennett. Former singer of Gross John Misconduct, Hinkley's former singer of Hinkley's Fan Club. That's it, yeah. And here I am today. Look at that monster! Let's do a simple one. Hey, we're gonna have to get another one of you, too. All right. Hey, this is yeah. Billy Milano. How's that one? That look good? Simple enough? Hey, that's my other band. That's an old picture, though. Let's get a zoom on that one. Oh, zoom is like 1985. Right out of GQ magazine. Yeah, man, you, you can see my fucking tonsils if you look real close. Yeah, I think the last time I saw a map like that, it had a hook in it. <laughs> I was yeah, fishing old. off the fucking bait. <laughs> All right, enough. So, what about. What, what are we doing now? Just yeah, United Forces. Guys, play that drum. Yeah, Just shut up and fucking shut do it. Fuck up, you fucking hair. I'm, I'm running, dude. I'm running, dude. I was the vocals of MOD, uh, SOD, was it? Uh -huh. I was the vocals of SOD, and I was in MOD, and. I don't know, some other ODs. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll OD. There's a big Wrecking Machine. Wrecking Machine. <laughs> Wrecking Machine, oh my god. In the cabbage patch. I can't do this while he's doing it. Straight face. Look at that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For our non English. The popularity of yeah. SOD. Alright, take care. Talk. Broke it up. Hey, fuck. didn't you know that? Yeah, because remember we'd fuck up and we'd go, oh, fuck it, it's hardcore. And don't fucking forget it! We're done, right? Oh, um, you're done. Pretty close. Hasta la Vega. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, here. Another one? Germany's favorite record. <laughs> Hi, this is Dan Loker of Nuclear Assault. I'm also in a band called Brutal Truth, playing the Walking Metal Fest, and I was an SOD. I think. Cool.